Earlier this year, we reported on advances in artificial intelligence and the concerns of Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and others about computers overtaking humans. It could start in the workplace, and when we interviewed New York University's Gary Marcus for our story back in February, we were startled by what he told us. Is the fear that some people have that they're going to be replaced by a robot justified at this point? For sure. And eventually, I think most jobs will be replaced, like 75 percent, 80 percent. People are probably not going to work for a living. That's a conversation we haven't really yet begun to have. There are a few people starting to talk about it. Since that conversation, the jobs issue has gotten much more attention. Two recent books from technology experts in Silicon Valley foretell a potentially jobless future. Jerry Kaplan is author of the just released Humans Need Not Apply, a guide to wealth and work in the age of artificial intelligence. The new coming wave of automation is blind to the color of your collar. Exhibit A, taxis and truckers. Kaplan says in the next decade or two, Driverless cars could put many of the more than three million licensed professional drivers around the country out of work. While automation long ago revolutionized the assembly line, advances in big data computing power could soon downsize the traditional white collar workforce as well. Even what you think of as advanced professions that require a great deal of specialization and expertise, the vast majority of the work is routine. And it's those routine tasks which can be now taken over by computers. So that what used to take the work of 20 lawyers may be done by five lawyers, or 20 doctors may be done by five doctors. The damage to America's labor force is both deep and profound. Maybe even journalists. My job as CBS business correspondent could also be eliminated. Now computers are creeping into the reporting field. At the Associated Press, Approximately 4,000 corporate earning stories like these are being written by computers. Philana Patterson is the AP's assistant business editor. How was this being done before? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, at one time, like when I first got to the AP, we were writing as many as 1,000 earning stories a quarter. I think everybody knows that the media industry has been contracting and we don't have as many people working in the newsroom. We eventually got that down to about 300 earning stories a quarter. So we were offering our customers less. And with automation, we were able to actually bring those numbers up above what we were doing before. The AP uses a program called Wordsmith, created by Automated Insights, a company in Durham, North Carolina. Robbie Allen is CEO. We can generate millions of stories in a matter of minutes or hours. Wordsmith takes raw data, like a player's production for Yahoo's Fantasy Football League, and turns it into weekly recap stories that sound like they were written by a human. But Allen downplays the doomsday scenario. I believe that, you know, it's, our future is going to be much more of a humans and software working together. And to our knowledge, nobody's ever lost a job uh, due to an implementation of Wordsmith. And in fact, most of the time, we're implementing things that previously didn't exist before. In terms of jobs, is it eliminating jobs? Is it saving jobs? Or is it kind of doing both? Well, in our case, we haven't eliminated any jobs. And what it's really done for us is that it's allowed us to give reporters and editors time to do more meaningful work. And this is the kind of technology that ultimately could produce a standard news story? Oh, it already is. And if computers continue to infringe on humans' territory, what would a mostly jobless population look like? Um, Author Gary Marcus says it could lead to dramatic changes. I think eventually we're going to move to a society that works on different principles where the state supports people maybe from taxes that come from the people that own the most robots. And they're going to have a different kind of, almost like a leisure kind of life. But I think more people have come to realize that a, a guaranteed minimum income from the state really is the end game here. These are only theories, of course, obviously looking ahead, but it's a conversation we really need to start having about considering where we're headed. And I also want to say it's been very nice working with you. I know. I was going to say, <laughs> do they have an anchor robot? I hope not. <laughs>